Okay, everybody come forward. We'll convene this uh, uh, recessed meeting. We'll go back into session. We don't need to call the roll um, unless if there's no objection. We don't. So uh, we will proceed. I think we were on uh, uh, item 23, House Bill 184. Which I think we're going to, uh, no objections, we will we'll roll that to the heel. Um, House Bill uh, 1284 by Ramsey. I think I'll turn it over to uh, Chairman Terry for just a moment. All right. Uh, we are on item number 24. Uh, Chairman Ramsey, you are recognized on House Bill 1284. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I have an amendment that makes the bill 4418. Okay. You have a motion to second on the amendment. Thank you. Um, uh, the uh, uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a uh, 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 amended caption bill. Uh, during the uh, pandemic, uh, as so many things that we've thank learned, uh, positive uh, lessons from uh, in dentistry, we learned that we were able to uh, – uh, uh, guarantee better the safety of some of the uh, uh, patients that were used in testing. And so the Tennessee Dental Association wants to provide that uh, access uh, to um, um, okay. uh, artificial uh, patients and mannequins for uh, dental testing in the state. So with that explanation, uh, uh, Await any questions. Okay. Any questions on Amendment 4418? Okay. Seeing none, we are voting uh, to add 4418 to House Bill 1284. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Ayes have it. We are back on House Bill 1284 as amended. Uh, any questions for the sponsor of the bill? Okay. Seeing none, we are voting on House Bill 1284 as amended. All those in favor say aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Bill goes on to full committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll move on to item 25, House Bill 1202 uh, by uh, Speaker Sexton. That has been all taken off notice. we we'll move on. Uh, we've taken care of item 26. Item 27, House Bill 967 by Representative Carringer. You're recognized on House Bill 9. 67. We have a proper motion and second on the bill. Ready? Yes, you're recognized, okay. Representative. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I bring to you House Bill 967. Uh, this bill authorizes certain health care professionals licensed in another state to practice telehealth while providing health care services on a volunteer basis through a free clinic. Under present law, a health care provider must be licensed to practice in this state in order to provide telehealth services. And so what this will do will allow them to work in person uh, by the state is what Volunteer Health Care Services Act is already uh, allowing them. And uh, Governor Lee has uh, allowed this during covid uh, and this would just be to extend uh, this practice to be able to do that. Okay. Uh, do we have any uh, questions or comments of the sponsor? If none, we have a request from the Department of Health for testimony. If there are no objections, we'll go out of session. Pardon me? Oh, okay. Okay. Um, that's that's a switch. That's a switch, sir. Um, anytime you're good, I'm, that, uh, the sun may not come up tomorrow. Um, the uh, uh, so we will not go out of session, and we will stand for any questions or comments to the sponsor. Uh, uh, questions have been called. No objections to the question. We'll be voting to send this bill to full committee. All those in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposition? So approved. We'll move on to item, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you, you, Representative. Um, item 28, House Bill 1240 by uh, 
Representative Parkinson, or Leader Parkinson, you're recognized, sir. Have Thank you, Mr. Chair, for the leader second. position. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Um, so, and, and thank you, members. Uh, I, I think this is, I've been before health, you know, more times in the last few days, last couple of weeks than I have, honestly, in the 11 years I've been here. I don't think I've ever had a bill before health. But I'm honored to be here, and I appreciate you, your indulgence. Uh, what this bill will do is, well, what, the, what I'm trying to do is give um, the nurses in our state an opportunity to have their um, nursing fee waived for one year or um, throughout COVID. But there is an amendment that, Mr. Chair, if we can get it on, that actually rewrites the bill and, and does it a little bit differently so I can reduce the fiscal note on the, on the bill. Okay, I'm seeing 4639, the amendment. There's another one, Mr. Chair. It's 00, 00, 00, 00, 6, 8, 00. Did you get that one? Uh, I, did you call me and tell me you were going to have a untimely filed amendment? Yes, sir. And all day we have taken untimely filed amendments, so I certainly wouldn't treat you any different. Well, um, so well I appreciate any grace you allow. There's, unless there's an objection, uh, we will accept that amendment, but I don't know that we've got it. We, we don't have it. It's never been filed, she, uh, even, uh, even untimely. I thought it was sent to the entire committee by Vanessa, and, and uh, no? Um, she sent us the one that I just spoke about. Okay, maybe she sent the wrong one. Uh, I got a copy right here. Is that okay if I get this to, to the committee? Uh, uh, I'm sorry for... Um, for let me... You know. um, uh, let me uh, let me roll you to the heel. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. And uh, let me roll you to the heel, and we we've not had a chance to look at it. And uh, we'll we there are several flags on this bill and have been ever since it it came to us. And uh, so I, I think it's incumbent that we pay a little yes, particular yes, attention to it. Yes, sir. Let me roll you to the heel, and uh, we'll we'll look at it in thank thank you, Mr. Chair. In, thank in you. a few moments and. And uh, make sure you get our get it to our legal staff here. Okay. Uh, we we'll move on to item uh, 29, House Bill 920. Uh, Chairman Terry, if you would gavel me along on that. All right. You have a motion on House Bill 920. You're recognized. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. And and the amendment uh, that I have is 6203 which is an amendment that was proposed by the Tennessee Medical Association, and we, we gladly accepted that, uh, that makes the bill, deletes all the language. All right, so you have a motion and a second on 6203. Uh, yes, sir, and uh, that essentially it, it, what this bill has always addressed is, is the uh, adding of uh, cerumen, which uh, uh, to to all of us here in the medical industry, that's earwax. Um, so uh, it adds uh, earwax management to the authorized scope of practice to be performed by licensing hearing instrument specialists. And inside this uh, uh, great amendment that the uh, that was sent to us, uh, it requires that uh, that the instrument specialists follow regulations established by the council. Uh, of instrument specialist and uh, regarding the uh, serumen man management uh, carry appropriate professional liability and maintain proper infection control along with uh, a, uh, a very comprehensive list of uh, requirements as far as as referral for uh, uh, certain issues and uh, uh, and courses uh, overseeing the courses that are that are carried out by physicians and consist of six hours and practicing techniques for these hearing instrument specialists. So with that explanation, uh, I'll await any questions that you have. Okay, any, okay thank you. Any questions for the sponsor on the amendment? Uh, Chairman Kumar, you recognize? Thank you. I was just, uh, would the service be covered by third party pay third party payers uh, you recognize Mr. chairman uh, we we had looked into that there is no code for that in in the hearing instrument specialist and and the situation is we have uh, 
um, in uh, uh, so many uh, one in three adults, 65 to 74, can benefit from hearing aid uh, management. And what happens is these, uh, uh, some, most of them are put in by audiologists or instrument specialists. And in the process of doing that, they have to make impressions and, and um, uh, refit and, and maintain these devices. If you've ever had one, you have to go back and back and back. And what happens, the cerumen builds up and, and they have to be able to uh, in in simple cases, be able to remove it, and they wanted that in their scope. There's not a code for a reimbursement on that that they have, and we we looked into it and didn't see one. So um, I'm sure with a otolaryngologist there certainly is, but not with these instruments. Okay, you recognize Kimmer? Well, thank you. I um, I think it's a needed service, and I appreciate you. Thank you. Any further questions for the amendment? Okay, seeing none, we are voting on Amendment 6203. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Ayes have it. We are back on House Bill 920 as amended. Any further questions? All right, seeing none, we are going to vote on House Bill 920. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Ayes have it. Bill goes on to uh, full health. Thank you, Chairman Terry, and that'll bring us on to item 30, House Bill 880, uh, which I think has an amendment. You're recognized, sir. All right. Have Thank a proper you. motion and second and on the bill. Before we get to the amendment, uh, I want to tell everybody my intent on this bill. And the, uh, the bill without an amendment is does what it says it does. It has the Department of Health um, uh, study on the licensure regulation of cannabis for medical use. Um, in the surrounding states and provide that information back to us by December 15th, 2021. My intent on this bill, as I said last week, was to have the Senate take action and they have, uh, they will be hearing this in, I believe next Tuesday in the Judiciary C Committee in the Senate. And so we would know by next Wednesday in the full committee what their action was. So I can either run this bill as is or run an amendment, but if we run it as is, we will know what the action that has been taken in the Senate uh, before we take any further ac action on the bill to amend it. So I'm, I'm at the will of the committee of that. So it, it sounds like maybe you would prefer to move it on to full committee, and if indeed there is a requirement to put the amendment on, we can do that there? Correct. Okay. Uh, are there any objections to that? Uh, uh, and Dr. Kumar, you're recognized. Could you kindly tell us what it does? Uh, what are you planning to do? Uh, uh, the bill, as it as as it is amend or without the amendment, has <laughs> Department of Health um, uh, study the uh, cannabis in various states. Report that back to us. What the Senate is doing with this bill is um, looking at decriminalizing the possession of cannabis for patients. In Tennessee, it does not set up a program for growing. Does not set up a program for dispensaries. Uh, what they're what they're looking at it, and what they have already passed in the health committee over there, is a de decriminalization bill. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Kumar. Any any further questions or comments? <laughs> what we're going to do is is um, uh, discuss this bill, uh, send it on to full committee, and if indeed there is a re that uh, that the sponsor add an amendment, we can do that there. The, any questions or comments? If not, we'll be voting to send this bill to the full committee. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Uh, so, so approved. If, if you want to be recorded as a no, just to let the clerk know. Thank you, Chairman Committee. Yes, sir. Um, we'll move on to item 31, House Bill 577 by Chairman Reagan, you're recognized, sir. Have a proper motion and second on the bill. I think there's an amendment on it. Yes. Uh, it's a kind of a frightening amendment, 666. That I have 6665, sir. Yes, sir, that's close enough. You are recognized on the amendment. Uh, uh, the amendment does rewrite the bill. Okay, let, let me have a motion. <coughs> I'd ask for a motion and second on the amendment. We have that. 
Um, let's go ahead and put it on the bill. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. Any opposition? Uh, we're back on the bill as amended. Sir, if you'd like to explain the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Committee. <clears throat> the purpose of this bill is to ensure that the uh, uh, family life curriculum information meets state standards. Additionally, it allows a parent of a student to request to review the information and opt a student out of any portion of the family life curriculum without penalty. This bill does not change the state requirements concerning con contraception information. In other words, that's still a line. It, the information must still emphasize that abstinence is the only method that removes all risk of sexually transmitted disease and pregnancy, but the other information remains unchanged as well. With that explanation, I stand ready to answer questions. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Representative Freeman, you're recognized. Thank you, Chairman. Um, sponsor, uh, as you read this, would this apply the, the, to colleges or just high schools? Just tell is can you explain that? Sir, this applies only to the K through 12 system. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, did you answer Chairman Reagan? It applies only to the K through 12 system. Okay. Um, the uh, Do we have any further comments or questions on the bill as amended with the amendment that makes the bill? Do we have any? Uh, I don't think we have any speakers, so uh, let's, uh, we'll go ahead with no objections. We'll be voting to send this to the full committee. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed? No. Um, uh, I believe we better call the roll, Ms. Clerk. Representative Boyd? Aye. Representative Byrd? Representative Freeman, no. Representative Hall, Representative Jernigan, no. Representative Kumar, Aye. Representative Marsh, Aye. Representative Sherrill, Aye. Representative Ramsey, Abstention, Representative Smith, Aye. Representative Terry. Okay. Uh, chairman, the ayes have it. Five, uh, six ayes, two nays. Uh, one abstaining, one present not voting. Okay. Um, moves on to full committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee. Okay. You have another bill, item 32, House Bill 575. Thank You're you, Mr. Chairman. This has a, an amendment on it as well that rewrites the bill, drafting code 6710. Proper motion and uh, on the uh, bill itself, pro motion and second. We have a proper motion on the amendment. Um, does the amendment make the bill, you said? Yes, sir, it rewrites it. Uh, rewrites it, okay. Let's go ahead and put the amendment on the bill. All those in favor of amending uh, 575, say aye. Any opposition? Uh, we're back on the bill as amended. If you'd like to explain it to us. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sections 1 through 5 of the amendment is basically cleanup language for the bill. This body has already passed uh, a, a bill which these, um, uh, cleanup, these cleanup portions are addressing. Uh, and these were actually, I think, brought to us by the uh, health uh, department. Uh, the bill itself, though, if, if by way of explanation, takes uh, the prior language takes the six metro health departments puts them under the authority of the county mayor. That's a portion we've already passed. Uh, and, but it does not change the responsibilities of the health department, only the authority. Uh, it also puts the definition of quarantine into the Tennessee code. That already exists in rule. This bill simply moves it into statute. Section six, which is what the bill is really about, is essentially saying a state government may not require a mandate that private businesses require proof of vaccination against COVID-19 as a condition of entering a business or using its services. Uh, for the record, I'd like to enter a statement by Governor Lee, who is supporting this legislation. Governor Lee's statement is, quote, I oppose vaccine passports. The COVID-19 passport should be a personal health choice, not a government requirement. 
I am supporting legislation to prohibit any government mandated vaccine passports to protect the privacy of Tennesseans' health information and to ensure this vaccine remains a voluntary personal decision. End quote. With that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I stand ready to answer questions. Uh, Representative Freeman, I think you would requested a question. I'll kick it off again. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so clearly this has happened somewhere. There is a regulation that someone has passed that requires this today. My understanding, sir, is that we have at least one county in our state that is re uh, requiring this or, or something very similar to that. Uh, I would ask that you not make me name it, but it is a neighboring county to my district. Uh, Chairman Freeman. So, so, so and, and if this passes, we would be telling private businesses what they can and can't do uh, in regards to who can and can't come into their facilities. Is that? Chairman Reagan. Just the opposite. The government cannot tell a private business uh, based on this that they must mandate a vaccine passport. So in other words, the county government under discussion was trying to tell private businesses that they had to do that. This, this bill says that no state entity, and by the way, counties and cities are subunits of state government, can mandate a vaccine passport. Uh, yes. So, so, so if, a, if a locality or local government decided that they wanted to do this, it would be allowed? It would not be allowed. You are correct, sir. It would not be allowed. So if a, if a municipality decided that they wanted to do this, they would not be allowed to do it? You are correct, sir. Okay. Good. Chairman Terry. Uh, thank you, Chairman. And to, just to kind of follow up on that, um, and the, the way this reads, a state or local government official entity, department, or agency shall not require or mandate that a private business require proof of vaccination against COVID-19, but it doesn't say that a business on their own can't require some sort of proof before you enter. Is that correct? You are correct, Reagan? sir. Okay. Um, uh, could you uh, please read the governor's statement back? Chairman Reagan. Certainly, more than happy to. I quote from Governor Bill Lee, I oppose vaccine passports. The COVID-19 vaccine should be a personal health choice, not a government requirement. I am supporting legislation to prohibit any government mandated vaccine passports to protect the privacy of Tennesseans' health information and to ensure this vaccine remains a voluntary personal decision, end quote. I, uh, thank you. I just, the, the cons I mean, I, I'm supportive. I've signed, signed off on this. The concern that this bill does not address that I would like to see addressed is, um, and of course this goes back to the, the debate about personal property and, and a business, but again, it doesn't answer the question of whether or not a business can ask, ask for HIPAA, COVID HIPAA information before they enter. And that this bill does not say that they can't ask for something that's should already be approved, I mean, under HIPAA. So this does not cover that. Chairman Reagan. You are correct, sir. However, HIPAA laws have already been addressed. If you recall, the first uh, executive orders that came out also contained information that was in the CDC, which essentially said that people were not required to disclose personal health information. Uh, for example, I have a little necklace here. Some people wear a bracelet. I have a medical condition which is why I wear this instead of a mask. Uh, and several, several times I've gone in places and they've said, would you wear a mask? And I say, no, I have a medical condition and that's the end of it. Don't worry about it. There's, there's not been any problem with that. Uh, thank you for the explanation. Thank you, Chairman. Again, uh, I, I'm supportive of the, uh, the bill. I just think that there's some more steps that we might need to take uh, with this. So thank you very much. I think, uh, Chairman Jernigan, you're recognized. Uh, thank you. Chairman, um, I think your mic needs to be on. Oh, okay. I'll speak louder. Chairman, the only uh, concern that I have is 
it, it's for what you can't think of right now in the future. Or is this just COVID-19? This is COVID-19, sir. Only? That's all it's addressed. Okay, so not future diseases that could come along the pike. This bill addresses only COVID-19. Okay, thank you, Chairman. We have further comments or questions. Uh, Dr. Kumar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman Reagan. I understand that this is for COVID-19, but do you think it sets a precedent for future events or pandemics or public health emergencies? Because, thank you, Mr. Chair. Because of the specificity of the bill, I don't think that it sets that precedent. Any precedent that would, it would set would require similar specificity. So a blanket uh, uh, approach in the future would not be based on this precedent. Doctor. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So if we have a new COVID variant coming along down the pike, this will apply to that? If it's Chairman. a COVID-19, sorry, sir. If it's a COVID-19 variant, by definition, it would. Yeah. Are, are uh, you concerned or should we be concerned that a variant that may be much more virulent, much more effective, and we find ourselves in a difficult situation again, we really don't want to tie the hands of our authorities? Chairman? Again, I don't see this as tying their hands, sir. Uh, we have exemptions in our law already for HIPAA requirements as well as religious exemptions uh, for people who refuse vaccines. I don't see this as being any more onerous or different, really, in effect, than those that are already there. Doctor. Um, thank you. I, I'm concerned, really. We live in these unprecedented times. These illness, this illness has taken a lot of lives, caused problems. We don't know what's down the road. We don't know. Someday we are going to be looking at a biological attack against our society and our country. And I really think that um, the current situation is not doing any harm. Our country has, is recovering and things are getting better. And I think restricting authorities uh, at this time, I'm hesitant about it. But thank you. Your answer, Chairman Reagan? Well, they say that you should stop talking when you've sold the car. <laughs> so I, I'll stop talking. Okay. Have you sold the car? Uh, well, uh, Chair Lady Smith, has he sold the car? <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, Chairman uh, Ramsey, and thank you, Chairman Reagan, for bringing this bill. I think that we have found, uh, you know, we, we've, we've sat through hours of testimony on COVID vaccine and vaccine uh, religious exemptions, et cetera, and, and and in response to a colleague's question, have we found an issue? Well, you know, it's the Biden administration that's talking about m making a passport, a vaccine passport required. So I'm glad to be a co-sponsor of this, but I would also tell you, I do think that there is a way to make this a little better in, in talking with Dr. Terry about making sure that any HIPAA information is not required upon entry of uh, any business. Because again, that sets up, any sorts of uh, discrimination on another front. But thank you, sir. I'll be supporting your bill. Thank you, ma'am. And I do agree with you. Good. HIPAA information should be private. We have further comments or questions. And, and I will say that the original bill had several flags on it. Uh, the governor submitted this language. And um, uh, so I, I think the original bill just gave no options for quarantining. And this this uh, new language has changed that, and I think it uh, it also was intended to uh, supply a certain amount of uh, protection that the uh, Chairman Zachary's bill uh, missed in its scope. So uh, you are the, correct, sir. Yeah. Chairman Zachary is in the audience, and he's a co-sponsor yeah. on this bill. If you want to hear from him, uh, well, no, we've already bought one car, sir. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> um, that, so, uh, so I, I think I think we're okay unless somebody want just requires his input. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, I do think that you took a marginal bill and made it a, a reasonably good bill. So, thank so you, Mr. Yes, sir. I, I'll take the keys anytime. <laughs> um, so, further comments or questions? If none, we'll be uh, uh, 
uh, voting to send this to full committee is amended. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposition? So approved. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Committee. Yes, sir. And uh, Dr. Kumar, we have item 33, House Bill 829. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is House Bill 829. Um, it is also called the Solemn Covenant of the States. The idea is that, that medicine today offers a lot of treatments but no cures. With the, cures are more, the treatments are more profitable than the cures. And this is an exceptional bill. It was brought to us by um, Speaker Jim Butler, who is a former Speaker pro tempore of the Ohio State of Representatives. He came and did testify before the Senate, and the Senate did uh, uh, pass this bill. Uh, he was here to testify two weeks ago, but we were not able to uh, get to this uh, bill. The idea is that to create an interstate compact. The state of Ohio has the first one. Other 12 states are considering it. This will be a joint commission of the states with one commissioner appointed by the governor of each state who will evaluate various treatments and uh, cures for diseases coming along. And if a cure comes along, then the, this compact will offer to the person discovering or creating the cure, uh, money that money that would be saved by the state over a five-year period. In return for that, the state will own the intellectual property rights and patent to that cure, and be able to be able to. Um, To, to market it to other states just like a corporation would. Uh, this, this will not become operational until six states sign it. As I said, Ohio has developed it, and 12 other states are considering it. And um, Mr. Butler's hope was that Tennessee could be also one of those states. There is no expense, there is no action to take except for us to say when six states have joined, five states have joined this compact, Tennessee will join that compact. And uh, once again, there are no costs or other obligations. Okay. It's a pie in the sky. Okay. Um, do we have any questions or comments of um, on this bill? Uh, Chairman Perry, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. Thank you, uh, Chairman Kumar, for bringing the legislation. I, the, um, I, I think the, the fiscal note uh, is unknown due to the multiple factors that are out there. Uh, when I first heard of this, uh, I uh, had been supportive, and it, it, it's a very unique concept I you know of course the unknown factors that are out there but it's a it's a very unique concept and it's a way to incentivize cures so um, uh, I'm supportive I just again don't know the cost so but thank you for bringing it well thank you it is uh, it's a unique concept from a public health point of view and um, um, I appreciate your support do we have further comments or questions? Uh, I, I know there was, when the bill was first introduced, there were several folks that came by my office. One of them was from Vanderbilt. They said there was uh, some of their issues with some of the publications that they have. I don't know exactly why, but uh, I've heard nothing since. So uh, my uh, opinion is that uh, uh, were there any negatives about it, somebody should come and talk to us. So. Uh, uh, with that, no further questions. We'll be voting to send this to the full committee. 
All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposition? So approved. You are recognized on item 35, House Bill 1045. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a public safety and protection bill that when a prescriber is indicted for offenses related to controlled substance or sexual offenses, at that time, the chair of the governing board will immediately restrict the licensure of that prescriber regarding the use of controlled substances. If later on the prescriber is acquitted, of course his license will be restored. If he's convicted, then the license will be revoked, uh, uh, going beyond the restriction alone. Also, the other part in it is that healthcare providers who are required to have a collaborative agreement with a physician to function, if they are found to be functioning without a collaborating uh, agreement and they are non-compliant, their license will be suspended to protect public that they, uh, patients that they might be treating. The third part is that the hospital and the facility administrators or CEOs will report to the licensing authority any incompetence, negligence, moral failure, substance abuse, or diversion of controlled substances by a prescriber uh, with the built-in uh, uh, consequences. Um, do we, thank do we you. have comments or questions? Uh, um, and I'll tell you my sense of the bill um, when we've spoken to uh, advocates on both sides. Um, you've uh, had, you filed an amendment yourself and then the speaker uh, Sexton filed another amendment. Do you want to put those on? Uh, yes, we do need to do that. All okay. the amendments came from the speaker's office. Okay. Uh, the first one is 5274. Yes, that is the amendment that I'm speaking on. Okay. I Thank you. Okay. We, do we have a motion and second on the amendment? Um, second, okay. Um, so uh, this, is the bi this is the amendment that makes the bill? Yes, uh, yes Mr. Chairman. Okay. And uh, so let's go ahead and put this amendment on. Um, all those in favor of the amendment as stated, which we've already had described to us, say aye. aye. Any opposition? Uh, we're back on the bill as amended, and then we have amendment one to one. Okay. The, the other amendment is 6677, which uh, apparently makes the bill, uh, oh, I'm sorry, it, it makes the bill much more, uh, realistic as far as the impact. I, th I think one of the big issues was due process. Uh, in, in an indictment situation, it's seldom that we ever have uh, uh, grave consequences. Uh, conviction is a different aspect, but uh, on indictment, the consequences were very grave, and I think that this amendment was placed to mitigate that. So. Uh, do I have a motion and second on the Second Amendment? And uh, so we will, uh, w would you like to address the amendment, Dr. Kumar? Generally what I described is along the similar lines. Okay. Uh, I think due rights and pr procedures were put in to for constitutional reasons, and I okay. think it makes it better. Okay, uh, so all those in favor of the amending the bill with 6677, say aye. Aye. Any opposition? So we've amended the bill with the new amendment. Do we have any co questions or comments on the bill as amended? If none, we'll be voting to send this bill to full committee. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposition? So moved or so approved. Um, Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. And so that brings us back to the heel. I think we have uh, uh, Chairman Curcio's 1355 uh, item two, and I think we're going, to, if no, no objections, we're gonna uh, take that bill off notice. He, uh, 
he's let us know he's not probably won't be able to be here. Uh, that brings us to Leader Parkinson, and that is uh, we have a motion and second on twelve forty. Um, so this, this is the status, um, and, and, um, we, we have this bill, we have this bill and there's no amendment filed. Um, the, so I, I'll leave it to the, uh, um, uh, leave it to the, uh, decision of the committee. Yes, sir. You're recognized. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and, and so... Let me just, if, if you will, just give me a second to explain. So we had an original amendment filed. This one, uh, I believe it's uh, 4639. That one should have been filed. Are you showing that? Is that okay. Right? 4639 hasn't been filed. Okay. Right. Four, yes, sir. Now, and, and, and I, I honestly, let me apologize, first of all. I don't know what happened with this uh, last amendment. But it it it, it should have been filed. And that's the amendment that we had called about and asking could we get it on is if it was possible. So, if if I can explain the original amendment that was filed, which rewrite which rewrites the bill, right? And Here. and 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 I don't I don't mind getting this amendment on there, uh, but but at some point you know if we can move the bill forward. You know, I would like to get the other amendment on there because it's just going to reduce the fiscal okay. note some more. So, so this this amendment makes the bill. Uh, yep. uh, yes, sir. The chair will stand for a motion and second on the amendment. Uh, have a proper motion and second on the amendment. Um, uh, we'll be voting to put the amendment on the bill that makes the bill. All those in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposition? We're on the bill as amended. Please explain the the bill and maybe tell us a little bit about what you want to do. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you for your for your grace, uh, Dr. Ramsey and Representative Ramsey and members. What we're doing is um, running this legislation to show appreciation to our nurses that have worked hard through this um, period of COVID and you know and the pandemic. And so what we wanted to do was to uh, give uh, waive their um, licensing fee for one year or throughout the, the rest of COVID, whichever one is longer, according to this amendment. Now, what the other amendment does, the one that you have that I didn't get in in time, says whichever is shorter, COVID, I mean, I'm sorry, one year or the uh, pandemic. And that's all we're trying to do. And and I wanted to, uh, you know, move this bill forward. I know if we move it forward, it will go behind the budget. But I, I actually got a meeting with the governor tomorrow, and I wanted to discuss the possibilities of him um, considering funding this legislation so we can show appreciation to our, our nurses that are operating in the state. Um, the other difference between um, this amendment that's on the, that you, you put on the bill now and the other amendment, it says for those nurses that are actually working in a healthcare facility right now as we speak. Yes. That's the only difference between them. I was just trying to shorten it to get the fiscal note down further to make it just as much as palatable as I possibly can okay. so the governor would consider funding. Okay, um, and, and uh, I'm sure if you go to the governor and, and we have not passed your bill, that'll be a very short conversation. It'll be very, very so, short. Um, <laughs> right. uh, so that, I'm, I'm guessing that um, and I'll leave it to the will of the committee. Uh, did did the Department of Health need to speak on this? Uh, if there are no objections, we'll go out of session and uh, recognize representative from the Department of Health. I just figured y'all have not heard enough from me today. Um, Patrick Powell with the Department of Health. The department, and I have not seen the newest amendment um, from Representative Parkinson, the department has been flagged philosophically and fiscally on this um, approach. It is not that we don't want to help nurses, obviously. Um, Representative Ramsey's bill had a just a $1,500 stipend that has a fiscal flag, but not a philosophical flag. The problem with waiving the licensure fees is it can create a, a system where you are at odds with the self-sufficiency statutes that the legislature has 
put in place for the boards to be self-sufficient. Um, if that's the case, we would have to possibly be violating one law to obey another. Um, that creates, uh, obviously, a problem. If the board was to actually be put into the red, you actually could have an unintended consequence of having to raise the fees later on, which would then be actually detrimental to nurses. Um, so it's more about the approach, not necessarily, obviously everybody wants to help our healthcare uh, practitioners, but this could actually have unintended consequences that hurt practitioners in the long run. Um, and again, would put the board having to violate one statute possibly to abide by another. So for that reason, uh, the department has been a philosoph philosophical flag. Do we have comments or questions of our witness? Um, if not, we will certainly take that into account. Thank you very much. We'll go back in the session and uh, you're recognized. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Department. Chair. And, and you know, I wish that the department would have um, came and had a conversation with me because I would have told them that my, my ask from the governor is to fund this so that the, the board would not go in the red. And so and that's the intent, you know, to see where the governor, if he can, pull money to make sure that the board does not go in the red, which would have addressed the um, commissioners or the, you know, the concerns. And so that's my goal. I meet with the governor in the morning. I mean, I'm sorry, tomorrow afternoon. And I, I just want, if we can, you know, just get this bill through. And um, if he says he'll, you know, we'll find a way to make it happen then uh, I think we're good. And if he says he can't tomorrow, then we'll take the bill off notice in the next committee. That's my goal. That's my intent anyway. So I will leave this amended bill to the will of the committee. Um, does anybody have any suggestions? If not, we will be voting on the bill, whether to send it to full committee or not. Mm -hmm. So all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposition? No. I don't think there's much question, sir. Um, I don't think your bill is going to yeah. move forward. The eyes didn't have it? No, I'm just kidding. No, just kidding. No. Thank you. Thank you, members. Appreciate you. Thank no, you. No, those two didn't have it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good try. Good try. Um, that brings us to um, to uh, the last item that, that we had rolled to the heel. Uh, so, uh, give me a moment of, um, of personal privilege, and uh, this is House Bill uh, 184, uh, item 23, and if you give me maybe a couple of minutes of uh, a recess here, and I'll turn it over to Chairman uh, Terry and, and uh, let you guys know that I, I take my defeats as a man. So, uh, I'm going to... I'm going to assume the position up front. <laughs> Sure. Sure. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Nor shoes. All right. <laughs> All right. Chairman Ramsey, you are recognized on House Bill 184. And and I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do you have a motion and a second? The, the, if, if you just allow me a moment to, to say a couple of words about this bill, 
Uh, we've we've been at this a long time. The um, and and I'd like for you to take your eyes off of me and the bill, and uh, and look at our state. The uh, health care is the second largest industry in Tennessee, and one in five of our citizens have inadequate access to primary care. It's very unfortunate, and uh, that's not changed. That statistic is the same. It's been since 1996. <laughs> Now I do feel I do feel silly, <laughs> but um, in uh, and typically uh, uh, 2014 was a typical year. Uh, we graduated 740 medical graduates and only had 540 residencies in Tennessee. Um, when when I first presented this bill uh, several years ago, the, there were 20 states plus the federal government that recognized full practice authority for APRNs, uh, the advanced practice uh, registered nurses, and now there are 30. Um, uh, and I asked, like I did last year, um, who do we think defines medical care in this world? And, it, and it's, not, uh, it's not the Department of Health or the Board of Medicine. It's uh, legislators like you and I in state and federal positions it's insurance companies, actuarials, uh, hospital boards, IT programs. We've already proven that that uh, information technology uh, robots can can be uh, much more accurate in uh, in uh, detecting cancer on uh, uh, imaging than than humans can. Uh, transportation, telehealth, all of these things define medical care. So. Uh, we, we don't look at anybody and say they're to blame, but if we don't move forward, if we don't make advances in, in providing these rural areas, 150 areas that, that have been declared uh, deficient, uh, if we don't make some progress, it's, it's going to be our fault. Um, so I'm not pointing a finger at anybody that came before us, but I'm, I'm pointing a finger at us. And so with that, uh, that long diatribe and, and heartfelt uh, uh, sorrow of, of having this bill move to the first calendar of next year, <laughs> uh, that would be my recommendation and my request of you. Without objection, House Bill 184 is moved to first calendar of 2022. Uh, Chairman Kimmer, you recognize? No, Dr. Ramsey, the the philosophy and the ideas you put forth really have merit. I think the matter needs to be looked at. It has not been possible to do that for some reasons over the years. And remember, we had a task force, and all they came up was instead of calling, we're going to call it collaboration, except instead of uh, supervision or something like that. Uh, and there was a truce for three years that this was not going to be discussed anymore. I really think that if there was um, a commission, a meeting, or a task force that would get together on it, evaluate the training of advanced practice nurses, and see where there is satisfactory performance, where the holes are, and try to make it better, and then reach an understanding that after adding this much to the training or adding this aspect, they are able to have independent practice authority. I think that our citizens will be served better. But a sincere attempt at evaluating the training and their ability to do things, and do they need something, that has not been done. And I, I think that'll be great if you want to lead it someday. You recognize? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and the, all the players are here, so um, they, they are listening to both of us. So thank you very much. Thank you. And I, uh, when you come back up here, you may have the gavel. Okay. <laughs>
I did not strike the gavel. We're going to roll that to the first calendar of 19 or 2000 and probably 1922. That'd be great. <laughs> 2022. Uh, if there are no objections, we will make that move. So any personal orders, any you appreciate all of you in the audience, uh, those that that hate me and those that like me. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Chairman, I Yes, sir. Yep. Chairman, you're recognized. Chairman, I just wanted to say what a pleasure it is always to be in your committee. You're you're very gracious to everyone that comes before you, and it's just an honor to uh, to uh, serve under your leadership. You're so kind. Any any other great accolades? <laughs> hey, Doctor Doctor Terry. Yeah, uh, I, I do want to uh, thank you again for chairing this committee. It's uh, yeah, you know, we try to run an efficient committee and try to get. Uh, as much work done as we can in a, in a uh, for the citizens of, of the state of Tennessee in a timely manner that's good for their health care. I'd appreciate you taking leadership in this and, and your role that you've done for this committee. Thank you. I, I do what I'm told, boss. Further comments? If none, uh, we will uh, adjourn to the call of the chair uh, for with a motion. So accepted. <laughs>